Hi folks, welcome back to uh, another stream. This one's a follow-up from the previous one where we, um, well, I'll show you, we implemented um, our own BitTorrent client by following the sort of sequence of challenges from a website. Um, and when we were doing that, I, I thought it was a lot of fun, but when we got to the end, it felt like the code was written as though it was following a sequence of challenges. Um, and, and I started thinking about, okay, how would I restructure this code um, in order to, like, if I if I were to build this for real, right? If I if I actually wanted to build like a real BitTorrent client, uh, how would I restructure the client? So I'm not talking necessarily here about like implementing all of the features of the protocol, um, like that could be its own kind of interesting. But but even just the code that we have so far for you know uh, splitting a file into these chunks, um, identifying how to download each chunk. Um, and you know which sub blocks exist within each uh, each piece, that sort of stuff. Uh, all of that code was very like top to bottom imperative, uh, and I wanted to think a little bit harder about how we you know download things in parallel. How do we prioritize which things to download first? And in particular, how do we structure the application in such a way that doing that is easier? Right, um, and uh, and that's what I want to take some time on today. So this time it won't be as much really guided by the challenges because there's only one challenge left, which is download a, like a file, uh, which is just not like we might do that accidentally as part of this, uh, but there are no steps guiding us to this. This is really just um, a sort of restructuring thing. Um, the existing code is on GitHub, and if you watch this after the fact, I guess you will. Um, end up seeing the code as it is at the end of the stream. So I guess go back to this commit, B7624AE, uh, and then that's where we're gonna start at the stream. Um, my drawing tablet is not working for some reason at the moment. It blinks up, it shows it's detected in Linux and everything, uh, but for whatever reason, if I do anything on it, nothing happens. Uh, so where, where we need diagrams here, I'll, I'll try Excaladraw and see how well that holds up to this. Um, okay, so let's close this one. Uh, I'll leave this one just in case we want to actually do the challenge, but um, I don't feel too compelled to that. So let's drive straight into the code here. So if you remember from last time, let's do a, a quick little recap. Um, uh, we have a main here, which is the sort of entry point for the code crafters uh, like BitTorrent challenge. So it basically asks you to make a binary and they call the binary in different ways depending on which challenge you're in. Um, so you see under command here, we have like this I think is like step one through or challenge one through five. I don't remember the exact mappings, right? But each one of these correspond to a challenge. Um, the last one that we did last time was download piece um, where so a torrent file is logically it like tells you about um, which files are in the torrent, um, which um, uh, and and how many pieces is it split into. So the the logical way that a BitTorrent file works. In fact, maybe this is maybe this is a good drawing drawing candidate. Um, so if you think about a BitTorrent file or really this, just a torrent. Um, the torrent is like a little pointer thing over here. Oh, no, I want another one square over here. Um, so the torrent file is a little thing over here. And logically what it does is it describes, um, like this box kind of describes this one. Uh, and what this bigger box is, is um, it's simultaneously a bunch of files and a bunch of pieces. So what actually happens is that this is, um, you know, this might have a, a file hierarchy internally, like slash, ooh, I want this to be uh, left aligned. Um, so logically inside of it, it might have, you know, slash foo slash, or at slash, maybe it has foo.txt, maybe it has uh, slash bar slash baz.txt, maybe has slash ba or quarks, 
uh, slash quicks.txt, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but it, it might have a bunch of files, but logically it is single, it is encoded as just a single giant blob. Um, and blob here in the sense of like a sequence of bytes. It is just a single blob of bytes. And then what actually happens is that this is subdivided. I don't think I can actually use that one. Uh, I'll, I'll draw it out instead. Um, in reality, what happens is that this file is further is is really just split into pieces and i want these to be i want my text further forward it's fine i'll uh i'll make do this is where i would really like to just have my own drawing thing um but it gets split into pieces that are all of the same size except for one that is sort of the remainder and then what this file list actually does is this file list is stored as a mapping of the bytes in the giant blob. Um, so for example, it might say somewhere that foo.txt is stored at bytes uh, 500 to uh, 1089, right? Uh, baz.txt is stored at 1090 to, or depending on what we call these, um, exclusive ranges or not, 1089 to 2 or 4096. Um, and aux.txt is stored as 4096 to 8000 or whatever, right? Um, and so as a result, what, what you really need to do if you want to download a particular file from a torrent is you need to look at, okay, what is the byte range of the overall blob? Um, make sure that you download like, you know, uh, if we imagine one starting to count over here, it's a, the diagram is a little weird at the moment, but like, if you imagine byte one is here, then byte 500 might be somewhere around here. And let me draw here uh, what that might look like. So let's say this is byte 500. And let's say further that uh, over here is byte 1089. Then in order to download foo.txt, you would need to download this piece and this piece and then read the end of this piece and the start of that piece. So that's, that's the, the mapping from files into a giant blob, right? Um, and so it's a, it's a really fun um, like puzzle problem in a sense to figure out which files to grab out. Of course, if you want to download all of the files in a torrent, then it's much easier or reasonably much easier because you just download all of the pieces um, and then you stick them all one after the other and maybe write them to disk or something. And now you have like the entire uh, torrent file. And then if you want to extract any particular file, you just pull out those bytes out of the giant blob by just by indexing. Um, it gets more interesting if you want to say only download food.txt because in that case, you don't want to download these two blobs or these two pieces because they are unnecessary. And then, of course, this gets a little bit further complicated by the fact that each piece consists of multiple blocks. Uh, blocks looking like this. Uh, so basically, every block in here, uh, like so, every one of these is subdivided into blocks, and all the blocks are of the same size. Um, and the uh, and what's the only thing that's guaranteed is when you try to connect to any given peer in the BitTorrent network, um, if they say that they have a particular piece, that means they have all of the blocks in that piece. But what you can do in order to speed up your downloads, right, is let's say you wanted to download this piece, you could get this block from one peer and simultaneously get this block from another peer. And so in theory, you might get um, higher performance because you're pulling now um, in parallel from multiple hosts. So you're not limited by the upload speed and give any given other peer. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the sort of rough idea of why there are these two levels of division. Um, and currently, you know, we, uh, what we built last time was, was this ability to download a particular piece. Um, but of course, all of this infrastructure that I've talked about of like, uh, you might need to download multiple pieces, the mapping from file names to parts of a piece, uh, even just downloading multiple pieces in parallel, downloading multiple blocks in parallel, which pieces do you download first? None of that we've implemented. Um, and if we try to implement that in the way that the code is currently structured, I actually think it would be fairly annoying because when we look at the code here, um, if we look at like, 
the download piece one, which is the, the most complete one that we have, right? It's really just an imperative piece of code. So it reads out the torrent file. It decodes the torrent file into like a, a torrent descriptor, which has information about what pieces there are and what files there are, for instance. Um, and then it talks to the, the tracker, which is the, there are basically two modes for torrents to operate in. One is where you download all of the information about who has which piece from other peers. And the other is one where you talk to one server and say, hey, who has this piece? Who has that piece? Uh, it's that second mode that is all we support for now. Um, and we're not going to change that in the stream, I think. We're just going to stick with the, the tracker-based approach. Um, so you contact the tracker um, and you get the information back from the tracker, which then um, tells you the hashes of the different pieces and who has that piece. Um, so that's this tracker response bit. That tells you what peers there are. Uh, then we do a handshake with basically a randomly selected peer among the peers. Um, and once we've done the handshake, now we have a connection with a single peer. Uh, and then we establish this um, encoded um, channel with them over TCP. Um, and then we, you know, send a message saying which pieces we want to download, uh, like which pieces we're interested in. Then we tell that peer that they should start sending us data. And then we start reading out the data one block at a time. Uh, and after all of that, we stick all the blocks together and then we hash them. And then we write that out to the output, right? Which is all fine. Like that is the sequence of steps, but it's not really how you want to describe this. The moment you want to say, download multiple pieces, right? Or uh, map files to pieces. So that's what we're going to do today, right? Is, is figuring out uh, how to structure this in a less insane way. Um, and so the way I actually want to go about doing this uh, is I'm going to add a new bit here that's going to be uh, download. Uh, it's going to take an output. It's going to take a torrent. Uh, it's not going to take a piece. Uh, like so. And when I find here, download piece. Uh, that's this one. Yes. So download this and here's, uh, so I've, I've done this on a couple of streams before. I want to write the code that I would like to be here by the end, right? What I would like this to look at is, is probably something like, um, uh, let torrent is, uh, torrent read, uh, of the torrent file. Right, that's probably going to return an error of some kind that we would want to um, lift. Uh, torrent read, sure, we can let that be async. That's fine too. Um, and then I would want something like uh, from this, uh, I would like to be able to print out uh, torrent dot tree. Or maybe this even looks like uh, print tree, right? So I want some way to basically print out. At this point, I should know what all the files are, right? And then um, I should be able to do something like torrent dot. Uh, mm, so, so I think I either want the ability to do download all, which is going to download everything into output assuming that output is a directory. Um, or uh, I want the ability to say download uh, sum, where I'm going to give uh, something like, I guess, an iterator. Um, Uh, we, we kind of have to decide what, what we would like download sum to look like. I was imagining something that's like impl iterator. So in this case, it could be something like vec of output. Um, assuming here that no vec of um, maybe tuples, actually. Maybe this is the way it should look like. Um, and there could also be a download single if we really wanted that to be the case, um, to output. 
right? So all of these modes should be supported by whatever this uh, torrent type is. And, and you can imagine that internally, right, um, these are all going to require, um, in fact, download single could return bytes, now that I think about it. Like there's a way here in which we could say, uh, download all sort of to file, right? But you could also imagine that we have a, um, something like this, where what it internally stores is the entire um, byte structure um, and the file list separately. And then, you know, in files, you can then do something like uh, for file in files or something, right? So, so this is really an iterable. And actually, maybe we just want to support download all for now. And then we could uh, we could improve that with some kind of filtering later on, like only download the following ones. Maybe this is a nice interface, actually. Maybe, I, um, maybe I'm happy with that. So here you could imagine that uh, you can pass in a set of filters over the files that you want, and you could do that based on the output of print tree, for instance. Uh, and then download all to file would basically be a variant of download all. Um, great. So then we could, you know, uh, std fs or, or I guess Tokyo fs um, write to output uh, files dot iter dot first or something, right? And you could even think. So files.iter is going to give us uh, an iterative list. Uh, next is going to be the first of the files uh, that are in there. Um, expect always one file. Uh, and I want the bytes for that file, as opposed to, for example, the name. All right. So this, I think, and then you could imagine the download all to file is really just going to walk this iterator. And there are some optimizations here, like maybe you write directly to disk rather than buffering them in all in memory. But but that kind of optimization, I don't think we need to worry too much about. So maybe download all to file actually internally just does this. Uh, it iterates over files. And for each one, it writes the, the corresponding bytes to disk. Uh, in which case, download all to file is not that important because download all is the one that does all the, all the heavy lifting. Um, so I think that's what I would like this to look like. Um, and so now we can actually start to construct it so that it looks that way. Um, if you remember the code structure that we have, yeah, so, so like the, the reason why you wouldn't actually, the, the reason why you might want to optimize this further, right, is you could imagine that there are downloads that are many, many gigabytes large and you can't actually store them all in memory, in which case you might actually have to stream the the... Uh, individual pieces to disk, you actually kind of always have to, just because if you want to be able to resume seeding them later, for example, chances are you want the pieces on disk anyway. So we could make it so that what download all will do is it will always store the pieces to disk and it might cache some of them in memory. Um, that, that's also something that's totally fine for us to do here. Um, but, but I'm going to treat that as a sort of implementation detail. So inside of source, you see we have a uh, main, which is this binary. Uh, we have lib, and if you look at lib, uh, it's really just a, a bunch of sub uh, modules. Peer here mostly holds um, the data types for interacting with a peer. Uh, so things like the handshake message and what fields are in there. Um, but it also holds uh, definitions for uh, message like the kinds of messages that you can send, as well as the um, encoding protocol for sending and receiving messages from a given peer. Um, torrent mostly has in the the information that's actually stored in the torrent file, uh, which is primarily the uh, URL of the tracker. So this is where we get information about what peers are connected, um, as well as um, this info thing, which holds information about basically which pieces there are in the file uh, and which files there are. So whether it's a single file or whether it's a sort of multi-file packed thing. Um, and so this is all just like information about a torrent. Uh, and we can reuse this type as the uh, as the outer type of torrent here. We just need to add a, a read method, which should be straightforward enough. 
Um, and then in addition to lib, we have tracker, which has all the, the types that define how we interact with the trackers. In particular, what does the request we send them look like? What does the response look like? Um, and that's mostly it. It has some special deserialization and serialization logic, which we don't need to talk too much about here. We sort of figured that out last time. Um, okay, so before I go on, are there questions around like this structure of this is what we want to get to? Uh, uh, does the implementation of each type of download function differ? Um, well, so the the hope if if we did have like download all to file, download all, download some, download single, the hope is that behind the scenes they all invoke the same logic, um, and really what they do is they just differ in like avoiding to download pieces that aren't necessary for that particular download, um, and sort of massaging the output of, or the, the result of what we download into a more convenient format for that call. So they're really mostly convenience functions. Um, disk sizes should be U64. I don't think there's a disk size here. Um, have you tried any other challenge? No, I haven't tried any of the other um, code crafter challenges. Uh, we're not directed by what code crafters asks now. I don't think they have multi-file torrents at all. That, that's right. Yeah. So, so I'm at this point. I'm not. The goal of this is not necessarily to meet any particular challenge. The goal here is just to structure the the actual implementation of this crate the way that I think it should be done. If we were to do this more sort of for real. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the. Um, uh, pubfn, or I guess asyncfn read. Uh, so this is going to take a, uh, a path to the torrent file. Um, and it's going to return, um, I suppose, a uh, anyhow result of self. And I actually don't know. Oh, we did bring in anyhow. Great. Um, and for most of these, at least in the beginning, the hope would be that we can just take out parts of the um, original code that we had here and just stick it in there, right? So this is going to be, this is async, right? Yeah, OK, great. Um, so we can just take the code from download piece, which has a lot of the, the sub parts here and stick them into reads. So in particular here, uh, we're gonna read the torrent file. We're gonna parse out the torrent out of there and then we're gonna return the torrent. Great. Um, and then what was the next thing we wanted? Uh, we wanted print tree to be something that you can do on a torrent. Um, so we'll do fn print tree of self. Um, and what that's going to do is we'll, we'll probably need a helper function here, uh, which takes a subtree, and we'll, we'll figure out what that what goes there in a second. Um, so the things that we have inside of self, right, is um, so we have the name, which is the name of the top level thing. So I guess here we could say, um, if let, uh, keys single file is self dot, uh, info dot keys. So if it's a single file, then all we really need to print here is, um, the name. So self dot name which is the, the name of that single file. Um, and I guess we could actually match here instead. If on the other hand, this is a uh, multi-file, then there's this files list that we then need to operate on. And so if we go down to files here, um, 
For the purpose of the other keys and info, the multi-file case is treated o as only having a single file by concatenating files in the order they appear in the files list. Right, so um, this is how we get to that uh, mapping of byte ranges, right? Is that the in the, the overall blob that we have, the single overall blob, the files are laid out in the order dictated by this part of the, uh, of the torrent file. So they must be in this order. And for each file, we're told what its length is. Um, and so what we can do up here, given that we're, we're just gonna uh, print the files, we might not even need subtree because there's no notion of subtrees here. Um, we're just gonna do for file in files, eprint line file.path. And you can imagine turning this into a more structured format, right? To actually store it as a tree, basically. Uh, but given that the way it's stored in the torrent is really just as a linear sequence of paths, um, feels reasonable to just uh, print out that list of paths here too. Um, okay, so that's print tree. That's easy enough. And so now we get to download all. Okay, so obviously download all uh, is going to be somewhat complicated. Um, so download all is going to take a reference to self and it's going to return a uh, downloaded, I suppose. Yeah, that feels fine. Okay, so what would download all look like? And we're gonna need a downloaded type here too. Um, and I think actually I want all the logic for downloading to be somewhere else. Um, so what we'll do is we'll use uh, super downloaded, downloaded, or uh, download. And then I want this to actually say download all. Um, and then I want to make a new module here called download. And then I want all the logic that, that has to do with downloading to live over in that module. Okay, so we need an async fn uh, all, which is gonna return an anyhow result of downloaded. And this is obviously where a lot of our logic is gonna live, right? Uh, and we're gonna have a pub struct downloaded. Um, and what do we want that to support? Well, we want to implement uh, into iterator. I can't type uh, into iterator for a reference to downloaded. where the uh, item type, so the thing that this produces when you iterate over it is a reference to a file. Um, into iter is gonna be a download iter. Yeah. Like so. Uh, into iter self returns self into iter. So this is just to satisfy the sort of last bit of this, right? The ability to iterate over the files in there uh, and grab each file's bytes. Uh, downloaded iter new of self. Um, and then we're gonna need a pub struct downloaded iter, which has a, this is a, a lifetime reference to the downloaded. So what downloaded is going to hold at the end, right? It's going to hold um, not pub. Uh, it's going to hold a uh, a thing that holds all the bytes. And we might optimize this beyond having it be a vec of u8, right? You could imagine this being references to files instead. Uh, you could imagine us using the bytes type so that we can easily um, uh, grab out or, or merge together pieces without having to do a lot of mem copies um, to do. Uh, maybe bytes. It's from the bytes crate. Um, 
And we have the files list, which is a vec of file, uh, which we're going to get from crate. Whoa, there's a lot of these. Uh, I want to use crate torrent file. This is going to hold a vec of files. Uh, and a downloaded iter is going to hold a um, file iter. It's going to hold a downloaded, which is a reference to the downloaded so that we can get out the bytes. A file iter, which is going to be a um, vec. Uh, I guess actually it's a slice iter. A file, right? So this is an iterator over this um, this files list, uh, and also uh, an offset, which is how far we are through bytes. So remember that for for the any given file, the the location of that file in the bytes is the sum of all the lengths of the files that came before it. So we need to keep track of that. In theory, we can instead keep an iterator over bytes, but I actually think offset here is going to be nicer. Um, and then we'll impl downloaded iter. We'll impl um, new. And that's going to take a uh, downloaded and return a self. Uh, downloaded is going to be D. File iter is going to be D dot files dot iter. Uh, and offset is going to be zero. Uh, and then we're going to implement iterator for iterator for downloaded iter. Uh, the item here is going to be a D of file. Mm. I actually don't think it's going to be a file. It's going to be a downloaded file, which is a type we don't have yet. Um, and next is going to be um, let's sum um, uh, file is self dot file iter dot next. Let else, man. Uh, instead of this, actually, I can do let file is dot next question mark because option in implements try. Um, so the next file we're going to get at is this one. Um, and the bytes for that should be um, self dot downloaded dot bytes. And we want that starting at self dot offset and ending at uh, self.offset plus file.length. Those are the bytes for this file. Um, and then we want to return sum of downloaded file of uh, file and bytes. And then, of course, that means we're going to need a downloaded file type, which is going to have a pubstruct file, which is a file, and not, not struct, and a pub uh, bytes, which is going to be a U8. Uh, it's going to return a downloaded file D, like so. Uh, same thing up here. It's going to return a downloaded file like this. Uh, great. And we could have these be accessors instead uh, if we really wanted to. So we could impl um, D downloaded file. Uh, and then if we look back at our main, what do we want here? 
Well, we wanted bytes at the very least, so we probably want something like uh, path, which returns a uh, stir, which is self.file.path. Why is that a vec of string? Oh, the paths are stored as, that's fine. Uh, so that's something that will actually be different in our torrent here, uh, is that this files list, what file here actually is, or what file the path is, it's a vector of um, subdirectory names. Uh, so we'll actually want to dot join this by um, path uh, main separator string. So we're going to join it by slash, basically, um, which is fine. And we also want bytes, uh, which is going to be the u8s, which is self.bytes, like so. Oh yeah, the, the trick with byte offsets is nice. So we can, we can do this instead, which has the same effect. Uh, this one, right? So we first slice from the beginning and then we slice to the end, uh, just so you don't have to repeat self.offset. Has the same effect. It's a nice trick. Um, okay. So now we have roughly what we want the, the returned things to look like. And you see the main thing that it needs is this file list, which we get from the torrent, and the bytes, which we get from downloading the pieces. Uh, you could imagine that this is actually a vec of piece, which is really where you get in the bytes type, right? So if this was a, a vec of piece, then now suddenly the, the iteration logic becomes more complicated because you might it becomes sort of obvious that... Um, the bytes for a given file might actually overlap multiple pieces. So then how do you bring them together? Uh, and so that's where something like the bytes crate would come in. But for now, let's just stick them all in a single vec and then we can improve um, afterwards. Okay, so it still raises the question of how do we actually do this download? Well, um, let's, let's assume first that we're gonna download everything and then we can refine the code afterwards to support uh, filtering which things do you actually download. Um, well, we know that there is uh, this is where we'll go back to our main and grab the other bit of code here from uh, download piece. So, um, where's the here? Um, First thing all is gonna to have to do is it's gonna to have to grab the information from the tracker. Um, and I don't think we actually need that connection to necessarily stay open, the connection to the tracker that is. So this is actually something that could go in tracker um, where we could say tracker response, right? We could implement for tracker response, uh, pubfn or asyncfn. Um, doesn't even need to be pub, um, query. And so this code, uh, that's going to take a, uh, torrent. And it's gonna, it has to send a request. It has to give some peer ID for ourselves, which is fine. Uh, port, uploaded, downloaded aren't relevant here. Compact one is fine. Left here is the number of bytes left to download, um, which in this case is really the entire length of the torrent. Um, and I forget whether we actually need to compute that or whether the torrent will say, uh, use create torrent torrent. So if I go over here uh, and go to info, uh, the number of bytes in each piece. Uh, so that's just the size of the pieces. 
but I think we actually need to compute it over the keys case. I think it, it actually needs to be the sum. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll do, um, we'll have another sort of helper function here on, um, on torrent, which is length which is then uh, match on self.info.keys. And if it's this, then that's just the length. Otherwise it's files.iter.map uh, file, file.length.sum. So the sum of the lengths of all the files is the total amount of, the total length of the bytes in this torrent. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna tell the um, tracker that we need to download. Now, obviously here, this would change a little bit once we start seeding as well, because then you might um, query the tracker and tell it that you already have a bunch of data. So, so we're not really dealing with resumes yet, but I think it should be relatively easy to modify this to allow resumes later on. Um. Okay. Um, so, right, this is where we like URL encode the stuff to the tracker. I remember this was a bit of a pain last time. We decode the tracker response and then tracker info is the thing that we give back. Great, so we now have a this can probably be a pub crate. We don't want it to be fully public because this, I think this type isn't even public. Oh, it's public to main. Yeah, but we, I don't think we actually want this to be, um, yeah, we might start using this for main actually, just to get information about a torrent. But for now, let's keep it internal to the crate. Um, so now that we have that, we can say that this is going to say uh, peer info is going to be a tracker response. Um, or you could even imagine this is just a freestanding function rather than being tied to tracker response, but I don't think it's super important. Um, so we'll use here uh, tracker, tracker response. So this is going to use query of, uh, oh, all needs to take a torrent. So it needs to do a query. Uh, we'll give some context here. We'll say uh, query tracker for peer info. All right, so if we now go back to uh, torrent, so download all here, we're gonna pass in self like so. Uh, and this we said, which is gonna be pub crate instead. So the way that you access it is through the download all method on torrent. Okay, so we have the peer info. Go, let's go back to our main and see what we do next. Now that we have the peer info, now this is information about actually connecting to the peers uh, and requesting the particular piece that we were after and all of the blocks in that piece. Okay, so this logic is very linear at the moment. And in reality, what we want here is something like, especially if we know we're gonna download all of it, um, we, we sort of have two decisions to make. One of them is which peer, or which, um, uh, which piece do we download next? And the second one is which peers do we download from? Once you've decided to download a particular piece from a particular peer, um, or a particular set of peers, then that that part is easier because it's just, you enumerate all the blocks, you request all the blocks from some number of the peers, and then you're good. Um, so I think what I want to, to get at here is I wanna do this sort of inside out, which is let's assume that we have picked a piece to download, and now we want to do the download of a particular piece. Um, so let's, let's encode what that might look like. Um, let's do something like, uh, uh, ASICFN download piece. Um, and so if you're told to download a particular piece, what information do you need? Uh, you're gonna need, if we look up here, um, this is just grabbing out the peer info, which is not the bit I want to look at. Um, I want to look at 
Okay, we're interested is the thing that we send. We send unchoke. Right, we send a request for a particular piece from a particular peer. Right, because we request, yeah, we, we send a request for that particular block of that piece. And so the only thing that we really need uh, in order to download a given piece is sort of a list of candidate peers. Uh, and I think the peer information here, if I find that right, is a peer here. This is a socket adder, great. So candidate peers that we could download a given piece from. Um, and I think that's really it. Oh, no, and we need the piece length, which we probably extract here somewhere, right? Uh, the piece hash and the piece size are the two things we need. So the piece hash, uh, which I think is just a UA20. and the piece size. And we'll, we'll figure out what this returns. I might, I might change the signature a little bit later, but that's all the information we should really need in order to download a particular piece, right? Um, and then if I now say, let's uh, extract this further. So download a piece block from. So this is gonna be even more like this is, we've picked a peer um, and we want block I and we want, and we know the block size. What does that look like? And, and I don't think actually we want these functions is more, I'm trying to break this down into what are the, the smaller pieces. The reason I th don't think we actually want this structure quite is because, um, It is because uh, you are probably going to have persistent connections to a given peer. You you want to basically have a state machine that owns the connection to a given peer, uh, rather than like connect to it each time you want a particular block from one. So so let's um, do we have a peer type here? We do, right? Um, we have a piece, which is information about the piece. We have a message tag but we don't actually have a peer type. So I think what I want here is a pub crate peer type. It has an adder, which is a socket adder v4. Um, and it's a state machine that we, we're gonna want to keep track of that state machine, I think. Um, but let's do impl peer new. Um, I'm gonna have a stream, which is gonna be the in main here, when we connect to a peer, we get one of these things. The peer here is the actual connection. It's a framed TCP stream with message framer. Framed TCP stream with message framer. Like so. So we're gonna have some first class primitive of a, um, uh, a, a, an ongoing connection to a given peer. Um, great. And that's this bit that we could just grab, uh, And so this is going to look like, oh, all right, we actually have to do the handshake. So this is going to say, you know, uh, peer, it's going to be a, uh, we could be even nicer here, but let's say socket adder v4 for now. Expected bang. Oh, struct. Um, so in order to construct a new peer connection, we're gonna give in the peer address, connect to it, do the handshake, uh, 
And for these, we could relax these a little bit. So currently, like if the handshake length is not the expected length, or if it's, this is not BitTorrent, rather than assert equal here, we could use um, anyhow ensure, which is a, a macro that ensures uh, that basically it's, a, it's like an assert, but instead of panicking, it returns an error if this is not the case. Okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, then we establish the connection and here too, anyhow, and sure. And, and sure, I can't tell. Uh, and assuming that's all good, then we return uh, self, which holds the adder, which we might not even need. Um, and it holds the, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I guess this is peer adder. And the stream here is peer. Uh, something else missing, which is the info hash has to be passed in here, which is the, uh, just to make sure that the peer actually has the same uh, block contents we expect. Okay. That's too much spam in chat. Bye. Um, Great. So we now have a thing that can establish a connection to a given peer. And, and the way to think about one of these peers is really that it um, it keeps track of the connection we have to that particular peer um, and will do things like uh, download a block if we tell it to do so. Now, the way that we want to do this is probably... Um, we basically need to think about whether we want to allow a given peer to um, be told to download multiple things or whether a given peer should only be allowed to download one thing at a time. I think we probably want it to be one thing at a time for now. Um, so there's gonna be an async fn uh, download and it's gonna take a mutable reference to self. It's gonna take a I think it has to take a piece I, a block I, and a block, does it even need the block size? It does need the block size. Uh, and it's gonna return, hopefully, an anyhow result of uh, VEC of U8. Typo, socket out of V4. No, I think that's right. Oh, socket out or v4. Nice. Um, so what will download look like? Well, we already actually kind of have download here, which is this. Right, so again, I'm just sort of splitting up the code that we had just in a long iterative mess in, um, uh, in main and turning it into a more structured way of talking about a persistent connection to a peer, downloading a given block over that connection and so on. Um, so constructing the request here is, why does this say block max? Oh, right, because the, w the way you actually frame the request is you say, um, I want to download starting at this byte offset and ending at this byte offset. And so the block I is gonna be multiplied by the size of the blocks. And the block size is needed because most blocks are size block max, but the last block is uh, smaller. So we need to know the actual block size. So often this will be a uh, block max. Um, great, then we send a message here. Um, then we await the next message from the peer. Uh, 
Um, and I guess we could do for all of these to really anyhow ensure. Like this. Um, and then I suppose this can really just be piece dot block and it's really vec from this. Uh, okay, a vec from this. So the the this piece is basically the payload that we get back here uh, from uh, from the peer. That payload is a vector of U8, but it's structured like there's a bit of header information and stuff. And so we ultimately want to get out just the block that holds the real data and then turn that into a vector. Technically, we might be able to do this in a slightly more efficient way by um, allowing the, uh, we could return like a thing that just ignores all the header bytes and then lets you iterate over the bytes that follow just so we don't have to do the mem copy. Um, but I'm gonna allow the mem copy here because it's for a given block, so it's fairly small. Um, I think this is probably okay. And it makes the interface a lot nicer. Okay, so a given peer, we can now tell to download something and they will do so. Um, I guess the other thing we need to decide here is around this um, interested and unchoke. And I think, uh, oh, right. Right, so this is also something we have to think about, which is this bit field. So um, the peer tells us which pieces it has available. And it might not have every piece. So I think, and then that's represented in the bit field here, uh, bit field. So I think we actually want to keep track of that one. Uh, that's not right. All right, uh, where is the BitTorrent specification? I don't remember the URL to it. It's this one. No, it's not 00, zero it's zero 03. Um, all right, and then we'll also do this to make people happy. Like so, um, Trackers, connections, peer messages, bit field. It's payloaded as a bit field with each index the downloader has, with each index the downloader has sent set to one and the rest set to zero. Downloaders which don't have anything yet may skip the bit field message. The first byte of the bit field corresponds to indices zero to seven from high bit to low bit, the next one eight to 15. Okay, so the bit field um, is really a, uh, we're gonna have to structure this one a little bit, but the bit field that we get back uh, from payload, bit field dot payload like so um why is my completion not working whoa it's very unhappy about a bunch of things let's do a cargo update here and a cargo check and see if it gets happier whoa uh rust up update maybe too Oh, right, there's a new Rust version, isn't there?
Let's see. Come on, rust up. Um, so my thinking here was over in peer that, you know, we, we're going to get this actual bit field that we're going to turn that into a type that lets us actually inspect the bit field in a less inconvenient way to figure out which pieces a peer has. So which, which one it's a candidate for downloading from, um, and, and also whether it has a given, uh, given piece, the, the two are sort of synonymous here, right? Um, and then we can make use of that in download to basically, um, for each piece, figure out which peers are candidates to download from. Let's now see if we get this to do something useful. Um, now is it happy? Uh, it's happier. Download. Okay, it's not happy about this one. That's fine, but at least now I'm getting error messages. So that's a start. Oh, this should be not context, but a result. And then, yes, I need to import this. Uh, yes, I need to import this. Yes, I need to import this. And bitfield we don't have yet. And bitfield.payload is the one that I wanted to... Why does it not understand what type this is? Interesting. Um, block max is stored in main. It should not be in main. It should be in peer. Okay. And uh, this one here should say self dot stream, and same here, because it's this peers stream. Okay, so pubstruct bit field. Now, there is a bit field crate. Don't know whether it supports this because it's a little bit of a weird mode. Um, the payload here is a vector of U8s, right? Like the if we look at the spec, the response or the contents of a bit field message uh, is a bit field. So each bit corresponds to one piece with each index that the downloader, so I assume the downloader here is the peer, um, has, the downloader has sent. I assume it means these are the, these are the pieces that I have, as in the, the peer that you're talking to says, these are the ones that I have. The first byte of the bit field corresponds to indices zero to seven from high bit to low bit respectively. Okay, so what that means is if we implement here on bit field, uh, we could have a um, pubcrate fn has piece uh, where the piece i is a u size and we turn to bool. And what this is telling us is that we want the, uh, for piece i, right? We want the ith bit. Um, so let byte is going to be piece i divided by eight. Uh, and let bit is going to be uh, piece i modulo eight. All right, so, so the byte is which of the chunks of eight bytes? And the bit is... What's the remainder when you um, do modulo eight? That's the bit within the byte. Uh, and the bit here is bit counting from high, right? Because the spec said uh, indices zero to seven from high bit to low bit. Um, and so what we want is, uh, we want to, uh, I guess we can just say, let, some 
byte is uh, self dot payload dot get byte. And it's certainly, we certainly, or that peer certainly doesn't have it if there's no, um, no such byte. Um, self, oh, right. Um, and then to get the bit, what we'll do is we'll do, uh, we'll do byte uh, anded with one uh, to left shifted by bit. No, I want right shifted. So uh, if we have a byte like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we have a, a thing like this and we want to know whether the uh, nth bit is set, then if it's the nth bit from the right, then it's one uh, left shift n, right? Which is gonna be, let's say it's three, then what we want is the third from the right, um, which would be one shift to left by three. So the number this would generate is this one. And if we and this with this, then what we end up with is, in this case, one, as in it has the thing, because these two are both one. Uh, I'm lying. This is shifted left by three. Now I'm confusing myself. If I do, uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, themes, just do solarized dark, why not? Um, why am I opening the playground when I have Rust locally? Yeah, fine. Um, uh, is it colon B? Um, one, left shifted by three. Yeah, so one left shifted by three leaves three zeros behind, so it shifts three over. Right, so uh, if for n equals to three, um, it, it's gonna end with one shifted over by three. In this case, that's zero, which means that we don't have the piece. But in this case, what we want is we want uh, right shifted by one. Uh, and I think, so there are, there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, one of them is one dot uh, rotate right um, bit plus one. And so what rotate right does, oh, uh, let's take you says rotate right, shifts the bit to the right by the, by a specified amount, wrapping the truncated bits to the beginning of the resulting integer, right? So what this will do is it will rotate the, so it'll take one, which has only the rightmost bit set. In fact, we could make this instead be uh, one, if we wanted to avoid the plus one here, uh, we could make this, uh, we could make this be uh, one left shift seven. Um, but it's not actually that nice. Um, so we're going to rotate right one. So one has a, the last bit set, right? If we rotate that by one, so the plus one bit, that means this is here. And then we rotate it another n bits where that's the bit we're looking for. So if we're looking for bit zero, we will not rotate anymore. And so the one will be in the right place to do the end. If the bit is two, uh, if the bit is one, then we want the first bit from the left, not the zeroth, in which case we'll rotate one more time, we'll get the right one. Right? So this is gonna end up ending the right bit, at least I think it will. Um, and then we're casting that to a bool, and the, the, the way this cast to a bool is gonna work is if any of the bits are one, then the resulting bool is true. 
right? And the only way uh, the resulting byte is one is if the, the one bit from our shifting here aligns with a one bit in the input, which is the pieces that, that we have within that byte. So this should tell us whether it has a given piece. Um, similarly, uh, we could also do this. Uh, your size, right? Uh, which is tell me all of the pieces that you have. Um, and so for this one, what we'll do is uh, bit is uh, piece. Uh, uh, we can just do four piece i in. Um, Yeah, so someone said in chat, why not just seven right shift by bit? Well, you could, but I actually think this one's easier to read. Like, I, th I think this one's also right, but I think this one is easier to reason about. So that's why. Um, we have a couple of ways that we could do this. Um, I think what I want here is actually byte and... Uh, Byte i in self dot payload dot iter dot enumerate and and then I actually don't know whether that's nicer. So the piece i of the leftmost bit in this byte is going to be uh, byte i times 8. Um, and then we're going to mask is going to be uh, 1 dot rotate right 1. And, and again, th this is probably just going to be optimized by the compiler to be equal to uh, 7. Right, and no, to uh, 128, right? Which, so the leftmost bit in a single byte being set. Unless I'm now, now I'm confusing myself, but I, I think that's true, right? So if I say 128 here, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So 128 is just the leftmost bit set, um, which is what we want, right? That's the, that's the leftmost bit of a byte. So we could write 128 here, but I actually think it's clearer to make it one rotate write one, uh, as long as this is a U8, to be clear. Um, and so then we're going to do uh, And, and here, to be clear, we could do this. Um, they, they are equivalent. Um, and then what we'll, we'll piece i is plus equals one. And in fact, this could just be this. Um, could just start at zero, in which case we don't need the byte i anymore. In which case we don't need the dot iter, we can just do this. Uh, and so, ah, it has the input iterator, don't it, done it. This is where I really want generators, right? Like th this should be a generator and it, it is not, uh, that's fine. I suppose, um, fine. We'll write this as a damn iterator dot iter dot, uh, flat map bytes. And then we'll do um, zero to eight. Uh, 
makes me so sad. Uh, zero to eight dot map. Um. Oh, I wanted so bad. <laughs> All right, enumerate uh, flap map byte byte i. Um, we could have a manual implementation of iterator here, and it might actually be nicer, uh, but it's fine. Um, so this means uh, we move in the bit i, uh, and now the piece i is going to be byte i times 8 plus bit i, and the mask is going to be 1u8 rotate right by 1 plus bit i, and to be consistent with the code above, Let's just make these be all at least consistent within the same part of the file. Um, rooted right bit i. And then uh, the result of this is going to be uh, the byte ended with the mask. Not bit one, bit i. Is there any way to make the magic digit eight in has pieces? Oh, this one? Yeah, this is u8 bits. <laughs> fine, I'll use u8 bits. Fine, 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 fine. So the associated constant uh, bits with a given um, integer value uh, is tells you how many bits are in that integer value. So, yeah, I mean, yes, that... Sure, now it's it doesn't say 8. I, I, I understand. Um, okay, so we want to do this. And so now this is the kind of thing where I really want to test that that actually does the right thing. Um, bit field has. Uh, so we're going to do... BF is bit field. Payload is going to be a vec of um, 0b 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I want to assert that. Um, it has, right, are all of these, one, two, three, four, yeah, eight, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yeah, great. Uh, so we want to sh assert that it has pieces zero. Uh, that it does not have pieces one. Um, we also want to assert that it has piece. It does not have piece seven, right? Because this would be piece seven. Uh, we also want to assert that it uh, doesn't have piece eight, because this would be piece eight. Um, and we also want to assert that it does have piece. Uh, 15. Okay, so that's this one, and then we can do the same for um, bit field iter. And then I want to do uh, bf dot pieces. Like so. Um, and here's what I want to do with this one. I want to, well, 
We, we in this case it's short enough that we could assert all the way through. It, so normally what I would do here, right, is I would write something like, um, I would just do an assertion over the iterator that it alternates to something. But the, it's short enough here that I kind of just want to write them out. Um, so we should expect to get uh, some piece zero. one and then uh, let me right so this is byte zero one two three four five six seven so this is seven um what oh damn it uh this is number zero this is number seven All right so the number seven should be zero uh, and then number eight should also be zero, and then it should continue. So this is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's see what that does. Um, I checked Godbolt and the optimizer gets rid of the modulo because rotate right doesn't actually care since the rotation is modulo eight as well. Yeah, I, I generally just like assume that the compiler gets rid of a bunch of these and I would, and therefore, I would rather write it in a way that it's easier to read than optimize for um, uh, than optimize for what the compiler might produce. Like I just sort of assume that the compiler is smarter than I am. Uh, I cannot find function URL encode. Uh, interesting. What? Oh, right. Forgot we had to do an ugly thing with URL encode. Ugh. Use anyhow. Context. That's fine. What else does it want? It wants path. That's fine. You can get path. Uh, what else we got? Read is... So I want to pass in that actual path. Uh, self dot info dot name. Uh, use anyhow context. This needs to await. What else we got? Downloaded. I want to import that. Uh, this is an await. All right, we're getting there. Can I cargo test now? Okay, not quite yet. Uh. No method context found for result because we need to use anyhow context. That's fine. All right, and I need uh, these bits for this to be happy. Uh, this needs to do this. Uh, this needs to pull in sync and stream x. Okay, uh, this is in fact a function that we're gonna need uh, over here, which is from payload, which just self payload. So that constructor is easy. We're getting pretty close. Uh, can I multiply u32 by u size? Uh, u size, that's fine. Uh, can't compare. Oh, right. Uh, that's fine. These can all be u size arguments. And, and I realize that these maybe should be u64s because they're uh, file file offsets and those are usually uh, u64s rather than u size. So that if you were to compile this on a 32 bit platform, you'd actually get the right behavior. Um, we can do that later. It's more, we already have use sizes a bunch of other places. Um, and so I would do that just separately. Uh, has, I should just say has piece. Uh, cannot add U32 to U8. Uh, that's fine. What? 
Oh, cannot multiply u8 by u32. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Thank you. I expected u8 found u32. Is that because... What? It's very confused about the types here. Uh, as u32, as u32. Uh, I guess actually as u size, because p psi here is u size. Uh, expected bool, right? So this is going to be bool from. Expected u32 found u size. Byte here is a U8. And this is a U8. Right? So... I'm pretty sure... I thought bool implemented from u8. Is that not the case? Because if so, that's kind of silly. From... Okay, I want the opposite set of implementations. I guess not. Huh. All right, I guess we'll cast it. As bool. Ah, uh, fine. Uh, not equal to zero. That's fair. Uh, bit i is now a u size. Ah, uh, yes, u32. That's fine. As u32. Cannot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did do that, didn't I? See, here's what I want. <laughs> okay. Uh, and piece I modulo U32 bits as U size. And then I want that whole thing arguably as a U8. Um, but it has to be a U32 because that's the argument that rotate right takes. That's fine. Uh, payload.get block time as U size. Uh, actually, that's fine. So this one can just stay in U size land. Um, now this one, so byte I here. Why is that a reference to a U8? It's a move closure. U8. U8. I guess actually this is a U size because I think that's what enumerate produces. Oh, it's because I have these backwards. Glad I checked. Uh, so enumerate produces pairs of I and val where I is the current index and val is the value returned. Glad I checked that. Uh, cannot add U32 to U size. So byte i here is a u size. Uh, this says u size, which really means it could arguably be u size from uh, as u size. 
and bit i here is u32. That's fine. Okay. Now can I test it? Oh. Uh, expect it to be a closure that returns u size, but it returns u8. Uh, uh, if byte mask not equal to zero, And in fact, if we want to be real ugly here, we do then, uh, nah, fine, 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 fine. Uh, th it's because this needs to be a filter map because if the, if the mask is uh, not equal to zero, then we want to produce piece I. If it is equal to zero, then we want to produce none. Hidden type captures lifetime that don't appear in the bounds. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, because um, this iterator actually consumes or continues to reference the payload until the iterator has been consumed. And yes, I know I, I held a talk recently where I told everyone that this is wrong. It still works, so it's fine. Okay, mismatch types in download. Uh, th that's fine. Downloaded bytes to do and files to do. We're almost at the point where we can run those tests and see if I got it wrong. How about now? Torrent cannot move out of self. That's fine. Uh, same thing here. Great. Ah, lib. Don't care about main. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, so let's see this bit field. How's it doing? Um, Iter complains at line 135. The first one. Good. That's always good. Uh, it gave a zero. It should have given a one. Okay. So we fucked up something. Pieces. We iterate through the bytes left to right. We iterate through the bits left to right. That's because I'm stupid. The things that are yielded here are the ones that have a one. So the, the output here is not the bit, it is the index of the piece. So the pieces that have ones are pieces zero, two, four, six, eight, uh, no, six, uh, nine, 11, 13, and 15. And then we should get none. Sweet. Okay, so this bit field thing is, is right. That makes me happy. Um, and so now we should also be able to say here, uh, um, anyhow, and sure that self dot uh, bit field dot has piece piece i so if you now try to download a piece from a peer that doesn't have that piece we'll we'll return an error beautiful okay uh so that's the stuff we want to do with the peer. And there's one more thing, which is around this, uh, if we look back at our main, back to where we originally were, um, when we connect to a peer, we send it an interested and we send an unchoke. 
So the question is, should we just do that when we first connect to the peer? Let's go look. Um, Uh, downloaders generally download pieces in random order, which is a reasonable good job of keeping them from having a strict subset or a superset of the pieces of any of their peers. Choking is done for several reasons. TCP congestion control behaves very poorly when sending over many connections at once. Also, choking lets each peer use a tit-for-tat-ish algorithm to ensure they get a consistent download rate. The choking algorithm described below is the currently deployed one. It's very important that all new algorithms work well, both a network consisting entirely of themselves and a network consisting mostly of this one. Uh, unchoking the four peers, which has the best download rates from and are interested. Peers which have a better upload rate but aren't interested get unchoked. And if they become interested, the worst uploader gets choked. Okay, so this whole algorithm here about how you choose to choke. Um, so the question then becomes, how do we want to represent this? Um, I think what I want to do do right now is um, I see. So interested. So what's the actual meaning of interested here? Connections contain two bits of state on either end, choked or not, and interested or not. Choking is a notification that no data will be sent until unchoking happens. The reasoning and common techniques behind choking are explained later. Data transfer takes place whenever one side is interested and the other side is not choking. Okay, so I think what this means is that we can always send unchoke. Because what we're saying with unchoke is, uh, and this is going to be bad for us, uh, but it's still okay for us to do it, which is, if we unchoke, it means we are willing to send you things. That's what an unchoke does. Um, which doesn't matter because we don't have seeding implemented at the moment. So we will send an unchoke saying that we're, we'll, uh, we're willing to send you things. Uh, interested, we should only send if we actually want... Data transfer between one side is interested and the other side is not choking. Interest state must be kept up to date at all times. Whenever a downloader doesn't have something they currently would ask a peer for, if unchoked, they must expect lack of interest despite being choked. Okay, so, so it sounds like what we want to do here is um, on a given peer connection, if there's something that we want from that peer, if they're willing to give it to us, then we should mark ourselves as interested on that connection. Which means we shouldn't mark ourselves interested unless we're willing to download something from them. Okay, I think I, I think I know what I want to do here. Um, I think I know what I want to do here, but I'm going to write the code slightly starting in the other end. So we're going to go back to download here. Um, and what we want download to do is figure out which pieces to download next, and then figure out how to get each such piece by marking all the peers that have that piece as we're interested. And the moment they get an unchoke, then sort of set up the um, the download from that peer. Okay, it'll be clearer than code, I think. Um, so this is in the all function, right? So this is assuming we're going to download everything. Um, we get the peer info. And what we will want to do is... Um, 
dig out all of the pieces and decide which piece to download next. And I think the way we want to decide that is we're going to keep a sort of uh, need pieces. Uh, and I think this is going to be a binary heap uh, so that we can prioritize which pieces we try to download next. Um, and initially, what we're going to do is for piece in, and this is the, the logic in main. Uh, and I guess, do we already have a piece? No, we don't. Great. Uh, so I want to go to lib and I want to create a piece thing. And a pub struct piece has a um, it has a list of peers and what are the peers indexed by the peers are in I think it's by their peer ID. Yeah, so the peer list is just a... Is the vector of addresses, right? So the peers, this is like the peers that have this piece. Um, and it's I. And it's length. I know this should be U64. I'm ignoring that for now. Um, and it's hash. And, and then I think what we'll want to do, um, we'll derive debug partial eek eek ord partial ord. Uh, no, actually, I don't want to derive those. And then I want to implement partial ord for piece. In fact, I want to implement ord for piece. And the reason I want to do this is because I want us to um, so we're going to keep a heap of which pieces we're going to download next. Um, and we want to, I think we want it so that you generally pick random pieces, but um, that you pick the pieces with the few fewest number of peers first. And this is sort of a distributed systems thinking kind of thing where uh, if few people have it, then you should add to the list of people who have it by downloading it yourself and then sharing it uh, sooner. Because the, the fewer the peers, the higher the risk is for that piece to essentially go missing. So you should participate in the network and sort of do gooding here. Um, in which case, uh, what we want, and, and I think, what is binary heap? Binary heap is a max heap. So by default, it picks the values to sort, the, the next thing you get out of a heap, it's whichever value has the highest ordering, the greatest ordering. Um, but when you derive partial ord and ord, it orders the fields in this order, which is not actually what we want here. I think the order we, will, we want is uh, self.peers.len compare with other.peers.len. Uh, then I want us to order by self dot 
uh, if there's the same number of peers, then I kind of want us to give a random ordering. Um, but that's not a thing that Rust really likes for you to do. Because if you order randomly every time, um, you get into this really weird situation where you might sort an array and it assumes that the sorting function is deterministic because it might compare the same element multiple times. So if you sort randomly, um, a bunch of algorithms are just not gonna work anymore. So I almost wonder whether we want like a seed here, which is just gonna be a, a random number, uh, let's say u64. Uh, which we're going to use to ensure that we randomly select pieces if they have the same number of peers. And this is basically to distribute load. If everyone chose to, let's say, order by number of peers and then by the hash, if every implementation did that, then everyone would choose to download the same hash next. Um, and so you end up with this like uh, contention in the network that is unnecessary. Um, so I think what we want to do here is then... Uh, self dot seed. Um, self dot seed dot compare other dot seed. And then, you know, we can compare all the other fields too. The, the remaining fields here basically aren't interesting anymore here because the seed is probably going to be different each time. Um, so we could do hash length peers or piece peers. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we can also implement partial or uh, which we can trivially implement uh, by saying sum of self dot uh, compare other. So anything that's ORD is trivially also partial ORD by the same ordering function. Um, okay. So what we now want to do is something like implement piece, uh, pub crate fn new. Uh, piece i as u size and uh, I guess this is really gonna take the torrent. No, it's gonna take the it's gonna take a reference to the peer info and a reference to the torrent, which is the tracker response. Uh, and it's going to return a self. Uh, what is the difference between ORD and partial ORD? Um, partial ORD is a partial ordering. And so with partial ORD, you're allowed to say that some elements just cannot be compared to each other. Like neither is greater than the other. Um, and uh, ORD is a total ordering. So every element is... Um, has a well-defined ordering with respect to every other element. So for example, for numbers, they implement ORD because every number can be compared to every other number and it produces definitely a greater than, less than, or equal. Um, a partial ordering is something like um, oh, logical timestamps. Like if, um, if I do a thing and then I do thing number two, then thing number two happened after thing number one. So thing number two is in some sense greater than thing number one. But if you and I do two things concurrently without talking to each other, then those two events time-wise uh, are not ordered relative to each other. Like your, your event is not greater than my event. And, uh, the timestamp of your event is not greater than my event and vice versa, logical time. That's a very brief description of partial ordering versus total ordering. Um, Okay, so the things we're going to have to pull out of here in order to construct one of these pieces is the piece hash, um, the piece size,
uh, and the length here is uh, t dot length. Oops, left. Um, so p psi we have length is p size. Uh, hash is piece hash. Uh, this doesn't need to be a reference. Um, seed is going to be a random number. Um, and here we could use something like uh, was fast rand. Is that the? Uh, oops. Nope. Fast rand. I think it's called fast rand. Hmm, no, that's not the one. Rand. Uh, sort by recent downloads, and I want... Or maybe it is fast rand. I specifically want something that doesn't have a bunch of dependencies. Yeah, that's fine. I thought there was another one too that was like uh, the one used for um, quick check. Yeah, but what is the quick check one? Doesn't really matter, I suppose. That's fine. I'll take fast rand. Uh, cargo add fast rand. So seed is going to be fast rand uh, random. U32, uh, U64. Any range. Um, and the peers peers here is going to be um, T no, it's gonna be peers dot <laughs> peers dot zero uh, dot uh, iter map. No, uh, dot iter dot map, uh, dot filter map. In fact, dot enumerate, enumerate dot filter map, um, peer i and peer. Uh, we're going to filter by whether the peer um, has piece. Uh, piece I, then some peer I. Uh, bit fields. Oh, this actually needs to be. Oh. As this is where this gets awkward, is that we don't know which peers have which pieces until we start talking to them. Uh, which means that we don't actually know. It's hard for us to tell in advance how many peers have a given piece because the only way that we can know that is by connecting to them. And, and it might even change over time, right? Peers might uh, gain pieces as they themselves download things. Um, so this raises an interesting question, which is, um, peer list. So I think what we need to do is we need to pick a random set of peers that we initially connect to. Um, And so that's going to be something like peer info 
dot peers dot zero dot iter uh, dot take three. This is basically how many peers are we willing to connect to at once? Um, let's say five. Um, map. No, I think I actually want this to be a vec new. And then I want four peer in. Peer list dot push uh, peer new of peer. I guess this is technically an adder, um, which might make our life a little easier. Uh, dot await with context connect to peer. peer. Actually, uh, we can do even better than this, which is if let OK, uh, we can even match on this. Because if a peer, if we fail to connect to a peer, we don't actually want to exit the program, right? Um, uh, peer. And if we get an error, then we could actually just like sort of uh, fail to connect to peer, uh, peer adder. Yeah, and like this is realistically something where we would probably let um, uh, we would probably let users uh, indicate the setting, right? So if peer list dot uh, length is uh, greater than or equal to five, to do user config, uh, then break. Import peer. Uh, and we are also supposed to send in the info hash. Peer info dot. Info hash so that we can also do that here. And I think peer new probably only needs a reference to it. I guess not. That's fine. It can get it. It's a. Uh, and this can get the actual address. So. Yeah, the, the problem of this is we're not actually connecting to these in parallel. Um, all right, to do in parallel. Um, in practice, we can, I guess we can do this a little bit better because we were already in an async context. So we could do um, peer info dot peers dot, um, where it gets awkward with doing this concurrently is you don't know when you've had enough, right? So if you do this concurrently, I guess you might just drop the connection, which would be okay. That's fine. So here's what we'll do then. Um, So I think in, is it in Tokyo? There's a, um, where is this thing? It's in task join set. No, it's join set. Um, yes, yeah, so you can stick a bunch of futures in there and they all get run. The thing here, though, is we want to limit the concurrency here so that we don't simultaneously try to connect to all of the hosts and just pick whichever first five to respond, because that that 
is probably going to get us banned in a bunch of places, right? Um, I don't know whether this has like a limit supported, like max concurrency kind of thing. I don't think it does. So we might actually have to use um, in futures util. There's a tool for this uh, that has its own set of problems, but we can use a uh, futures unordered here, which uh, not futures unordered. Sorry. Uh, where do we have it? Uh, stream X. So if you have a, a stream, which is arguably just an iterator, um, you can do dot, where are you? Uh, for each concurrent is not the one I want. I want buffer unordered. Um, an adapter for creating a buffered list of pending futures. Oh, actually, I, yeah, so the return stream will be a stream of each future's output. No more than n futures will be buffered at any point in time, and less than n may also be buffered depending on the state of each future. And so this lets us do the basically what we want. Um, and I, did I already have futures util here? Uh, I do, yes, okay. So in that case, uh, and if I just pull in futures util stream stream x, then now I should here be able to do um, dot iter, and then we're gonna have to do um, futures util stream iter to turn the iterator into a stream. Uh, and then we are going to map uh, the peer adder into a peer new. So it becomes a future. Uh, and then we're going to buffer unordered um, five user config. Um, And then what I want here is let mute uh, so that's the that's the stream and then while let some peer is peers dot next dot await I guess I could do copied here, but it's fine. So what this will do is we're creating a, a stream over all of the addresses. Um, for each one, uh, when it gets uh, when it gets pulled into the buffered unordered. So we construct a future for each one, uh, but constructing the future, if we uh, go here, constructing the future does nothing because this is constructs a TCP stream connect. Uh, we could do this, uh, we could enforce that this is actually does nothing by doing this. Um, so this is going to guarantee that this future does nothing until the first time it's pulled. Um, and we say that at most five of these futures should be running at any given point in time. We can make that less too, right? So that we don't connect to too many more than we need. Um, and then but we can keep it five, that's fine. And then we're just going to read the the outcome of the stream, which is going to be just whichever futures complete first, which is whichever peers we connect to first. Um, and we match on that peers connection. If we fail to connect to one, that's fine. We don't really care. Um, and we could here also say, you know, let peer is equal to this. Um, and we're going to return uh, peer adder and peer. Like so, so that we can give error message about which peer we actually failed to connect to. Um, and then we can do E to print out the actual error that we got. Um, 
If we got a peer out of there that we successfully connected to, we add it to the list. If the list is long enough, then we break. Um, and when we break here, we also drop the peers list of futures so that all of those connections are also just thrown away. Uh, so now we have a peer list. Uh, and now that we have an actual peer list with open connections, uh, then now we can use the piece thing to pass in the, the list of peers. So this will not actually be the tracker response. This will be a list of peers. Um, uh, and in fact, if we go to peer here, I think the this um, has piece thing is actually something that can be a function on um, on the whole peer and not just on the bit field um, subfield, which is not public, right? So if you have a peer, you can ask whether it has a given piece. Great. Um, so now when we construct a piece, we can have it know how many peers have that. Uh, and that can go here. Expected vec u size, right. So this needs to dot collect. Excellent. So if we now go back to download, um, then now we can do Um, need pieces dot extend of actually I guess I guess really what we want to do now is do the whole uh, same thing as we did in main which is to figure out how many pieces there are actually I guess we know how many pieces there are so for uh, piece I in uh, this uh, for each one, we're going to say piece is now going to be piece new of piece I reference to the T reference to peers. Uh, this thing. Oh, peer list. I guess here we could also do uh, peers is peer list. <laughs> so many ways to spell peer, peers. Um, and then need. We could even do here uh, if piece dot. Well, what's tricky here too is that um, if something has no peers, then we don't have a way to download it. And the only way to download it is to connect to more peers, which is a little bit awkward. So we're going to want something here that's sort of in the background, uh, maybe sort of randomly reaches out to new peers. Hmm. But okay. Um, so in theory, we'll do need pieces dot push of piece. Um, and then now that we've added all of these in, what I was thinking here is that we kind of want something like um, no peers. And if and I guess this is something we can do on a uh, piece here is something like pub crate uh, has Uh, 
So we could do here if peace.peers.is empty, then no peers peace else need pieces.push piece. So what we could do here is um you know while we could stick this whole thing in a while loop. Um Or in fact, it would have to be like this whole thing out here. Um, we basically need something to make sure that we have at least one peer for every piece. But I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over that for now because I I want to get to something more complete and then we can refactor it to to take into account that case. So for now, we're just gonna assert that no peers uh, is empty, and this is obviously a giant to do. Uh, and then what we'll do is while let uh, some next piece is need pieces dot pop. Um, we will So at this point, we now need to figure out where we download each blob from. Uh, or each block, sorry. Uh, so it's gonna be this bit. Piece dot, a oh, piece and peers is messing me up real bad. Uh, so I want, this is another helper that I want here which is length, it's going to tell me piece.length, like so. Uh, oh, where did we stick block max? It's in peer. Why is it in peer? Ah, I think this actually goes in lib. That's what I think. Uh, so here we're going to import create block max. And then we can do the same thing in download. Block max comes from crate. Great. Um, and the piece size. Yeah, we can track that in here. Um, this is let piece size is piece dot length. So, you know, every piece consists of a bunch of blocks. Uh, and here we have a list of all of the blocks and we also know all of the peers that we're we could possibly iterate over here, right? So let mute um, peers is going to be. Actually, I don't need it to be mutable. I just want to do um, piece dot peers dot iter dot map. Uh, so this is the peer i. Right, and what I want to grab out is a mutable reference to, and it's not going to like this at all. Um, what I really want to do, right, is uh, uh, peers of peer i. This is going to complain about um, multiple borrows. Um, it doesn't yet because there are other errors, but this is going to com complain about the fact that I'm borrowing peers multiple times because it doesn't know that the, the peer eyes are, are non-overlapping. Um, there are a couple of ways to deal with that. The easiest one, I think, is actually for piece to hold a hash set of peers. And you'll see why in a second. Um, so if this holds a... 
a hash set of peers. Hash set of this. What's it complaining about? Hash set U size is not an iterator. I mean, I agree with that. What? Wait, what? Hash set? D does it not implement? I don't think hash set implements ORD. Why does hash set not implement ORD? Why can you not order hash sets? That just feels like an unnecessary restriction. Um, can I order their iterators? I can. Okay, great. That's good enough for me. We're, we're basically never going to get to that part of the comparison anyway. I guess it could be a B tree set instead of, uh, of a hash set, but, um, it's complaining about, it's complaining a bunch in download. That's fine because now what we can do is instead say peers dot iter mute, which gives us a ref a mutable reference to each element, uh, enumerate uh, dot filter map. So this has an I and then it has a mutable reference to the peer. Uh, and now we can do if uh, piece dot peers contains I. then peer dot collect. Um, really? Oh, fine. Uh, then sum peer i. So what this is doing is the, the iter mute on vectors uh, knows that it's allowed to yield mutable references to all the elements separately because it knows that everything it yields is an independent element that it is allowed to m give out mu mutable borrows of each element concurrently uh, or not concurrently but rather it's okay to give out a mutable reference to the first element and the second element both at the same time which is effectively what the iterator ends up doing and so then we can filter that iterator based on only the peer eyes that appear in the peer list. And the reason I wanted this to be a hash set instead of a vector is because otherwise we would need to search the vector every time for the element. Um, whereas with a hash set, we can just do contains. Oh, it's because iteration isn't defined. Uh, you're right. Iteration is, is random for hash sets. Which, now that I think about it, might actually be the only randomness that we need. Right? Like, that just means that we can really order here by that, and then we don't need the seed because iteration order of hash sets is random. Of hash set to avoid deterministic contention. So that way we no longer need the seed here 
which means we no longer need fast rend. Nice, I'll take it. Um, right. So now we have a list of the, we have a mutable reference to each of the peers that uh, have this particular piece. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to download all of the blocks. Um, and I want to map uh, block I here. Great. And then I want to map that again. I guess I can just map it once. Um, so I kind of want So we're trying to download all of the blocks and what we actually want to do is not quite this. What we actually want to do is make This is where the, the unchoking comes in. We want all of the peers that have the, um, that have this piece mark themselves as interested and request some subset of the block. But if a peer is choked, then we want another peer to take over that block instead. So it's like one way in which we could do this, right? Is we, we pick a random peer, uh, like uh, you know, rand dot rand choose or whatever uh, of peers. Uh, and then we just send the request to that peer. Uh, and then we do all of these in parallel. But I don't think that's actually quite what we want to do. Um, instead, We, we kind of want these these um, peer instances to cooperate, right? Because they need to keep track of who's responsible for getting which block. So in a sense, it is like a, a work-stealing pool of if some peer is trying to... Uh, like, basically, we, we um, enqueue all of the blocks... And then the peers just take, whenever they get unchoked, they take the next block and they try to download it. I think I'm liking this. I think I'm liking this. Um, so what we would do is we would create a uh, work queue. And a work queue in this case is really just a channel. Um, so let's do... Yeah, so we want an async channel here, and I think we want, um, so we want a work stealing channel, which really means we want an MPMC channel. Which, what channel do I want to use for this? I like thing buff, um, which I think gives you MPMC. Thing buff. Ah, but I think thing buff does not give you. Yeah, it doesn't give you an async version of this. Cause 
because the only there's a um, there's an MPSC channel built on top of it, but that's qu not quite what we want either. Because what I really want here is a, a async MPMC channel. Let's see what we get. Async channel. Well, but this is a small based one, which I don't want for Tokyo. Uh, flume. Docs. Async. Yeah, but it uses a sync API, which I don't really want to use. Mm, it's canal. All right. Higher is better. Canal async MPMC big. All right, sure. Why not? Got to start somewhere. Uh, what I actually want is a single producer one. Actually, no, I need a multi-producer. So the, the, re the, the reason I'm hesitating here is because imagine that you have two peers um, and we have a channel where we send all of the, uh, all of the block indices, like all the block eyes, we send to um, a channel that's shared between these two peers. Imagine one of the peers is really slow and the other one's really fast. So the first one, so they both initially uh, grab a thing from the queue um, and they both sort of request that um, and then the fast one completes takes another one from the queue completes takes another one from the queue until eventually uh, the fast one is sitting idle and the slow one is still sitting on that one block that it initially took what would be really nice is if, if there was a way for the fast one to steal the block from the slow one, or alternatively for the slow one to time out and then uh, basically deregister itself and and stick the um, uh, and then stick the like if it times out, stick the block ID that it basically failed to get back onto the queue and then remove itself as a receiver. That's what I think I want. In which case you need an MPMC because you need to be able to have a receiver send back to the others. Uh, is Tokyo Sync Broadcast good enough for this? I thought... Many values for many producers to many consumers. Each consumer will receive each value is the problem. Um, so when you send one thing, uh, it's received by everyone, which is not actually what I want, right? I want, when you call receive, only you get that one because you are responsible for downloading it. So it's not quite the same. Um, oh, Canal is pre, it's very early version. <sighs> I just want, I know there's also, um, uh, no, it's none of these. It's um, in Crossbeam. There's like a work stealing queue, but it's not async. <sighs> All right. All right, Canal. See what you can do. Um, so here's what I want. I want a TX and an RX. All right, let's call it submit and uh, tasks uh, is canal 
I think it's, I think this can be bounded actually. Bounded async. Um, because we know how many blocks there are. Um, great. And then here's what I want to do. Um, join set here is going to be, um, so if you remember from the Tokyo docs is a join set under task, uh, join set, a way to completion of some of, or all of the tasks in a set. The set is not ordered and the task will be returned in the order that they complete. Now we don't actually care about what they, uh, the, the completion result for these instead. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. So here's what I'm thinking. Well, how do I connect into the, okay. I create the set first. Uh, so join set new. Why is this not giving me completions anymore? There we go. Um, for peer in peers. Um, and then I want to do something like uh, participate. And I'm going to give it submit and tasks. And I want join set dot um, spawn async move. In fact, I don't think the move here is going to matter. So I want join set dot spawn. Yeah, so I want to spawn all of the peers participating in this. And then I want to... For... For block in this. So I'm going to basically enqueue a job for every block. Submit dot send a block. I guess dot await. Um, and then this is what the receiver is going to do. So it's going to be something like uh, 37. So on the peer side, and I guess I can generate this from here. Uh, apparently not. Um, pub crate async fn participate. It takes a mutable reference to self. It takes a submit, which is a canal async sender of u size and a tasks, which is in canal async receiver of u size. And inside of there, it's going to do something like I get while let some um, block is tasks dot receive dot await uh, 
right? So it's going to continuously receive tasks that it's going to download from this channel. Um, and then it just constructs a request, sends that request on its own thing, uh, waits for the response, pieces it together, and then does something with the result. Um, and what it does with the result, I haven't quite decided yet. It might just be a um, vector of these uh, these full responses. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I think I want another one, which is um, finish and done. This is going to be a finish here, which takes a, a piece. Right, so the idea here is that if you actually get this, then you send the... Uh, this is just used for assertions, so that's fine. Uh, then you send the piece over here. And then I think what we'll do is probably this await. So here, uh, we should have a timeout and return block to uh, submit if timed out. here. And then on the receiving end, so we're going to send out all the blocks and then um, we're going to have a loop here, which is going to be um, a Tokyo select over um, join set dot next dot await or join set dot next and uh, done dot next uh, receive I mean and this can actually be a Tokyo uh, MPSC Tokyo Sync uh, channel, MPSC channel. And so we can go up here and make that be a Tokyo Sync MPSC sender. Uh, what is type of piece here? I'm confused. The the thing that we get back from next here something something's lying. Uh Right, so this is going to need piece i and n blocks. That's fine. Uh Piece size. Okay, it also needs the piece size. That's fine. Okay, some. Yeah, this is not important. I want to get to the good stuff. 
Ah, this is self.stream and this is self.stream. And now what's the type of piece? Is a message. So message is what I want to send here. Uh, and I suppose this can return anyhow result. So if one of these fail, um, like if a peer completely fails in the middle of downloading blocks from it, we want to like eliminate it from the, the set of peers. Um, so that's fine. If we get down here, then okay. Great. So this one's now happy. Task receive returns a result of use size. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we don't currently use submit because, because of this to do. Um, but the interesting part here should be, what do you mean you can't infer the type? Oh, peers here can be a, doesn't really back is fine. Doesn't really matter. Um, and this now needs piece I, piece size and n blocks. Piece I, piece size and n blocks. I guess piece, that's fine. Uh, oh, I, I guess we actually need to uh, show which piece this is. So length and uh, index, which is self dot piece I index. Okay, so we're gonna make all of the peers participate by running this loop. Uh, for, then we're gonna send all of the blocks in as jobs. And then we're gonna observe both the the done list and the um, uh, the join set. So the, the reason we wanna watch the join set is um, if a participant ends early, it's either slow or failed. Um, And here it's, uh, you know, I guess this is like message. Then, um, you know, keep track of the bytes in message. And where this now gets interesting is all blocks is going to be a vec of 0 u8 of length piece size um, and then if we again go back to our main right we have this code where we figure out the begin and the end So here we want to do this. All right, I guess piece is fine here. And this is actually a create peer piece, just to be clear. Um, and so what we should now be able to do is we find the block of bytes in here and we should then be able to do all blocks um, sliced from piece.begin and onwards, copy from slice piece.block. And then we can get rid of the asserts. Uh, what does this... Type view it cannot be indexed by range from. What? Oh, begin as u32, as u size. Uh, next does not exist for join results. Uh, what is it then? It's called join next. And it's either, it's an option result. It 
So if this is none, then that means there are no peers. Um, if this means, if this is sum of okay, it means uh, the peer gave up because it timed out. Um, and if it's error, is the peer failed and should be removed later. Right, so these are the cases for this one. Um, receive just gives back an option, so that's perfect. And I guess really, if we get none back from done, uh, if let some piece is piece, then this else. Uh, have received every piece or no peers left. So let's see, once we've told everyone to participate, then we should drop our finish and we also should drop our submit after we've done this, right? To indicate that there's no more uh, inputs of this kind. Any code following this expression is unreachable. Why? Oh, right. Um, so if we get to this, uh, let's break. Technically, we're gonna need to do a little bit more than that. Um, but at the end of this, we should now end up with all of the blocks having been filled into this vector. And so now we should be able to compare the SHA-1. Ugh, what's the stuff we need to implement to get that? We need uh, this. And this should match the piece hash, which I thought we got from Right, so in piece, uh, we have the index and we also have the hash. U820. And so we should, at the end, make sure that this matches piece.hash. Great. Uh, all blocks does not need to be set up here. Can I borrow peers as mutable? Sure we can. Uh, peers was mutably borrowed somewhere. Returning this value requires that peer is borrowed for static. Why? <laughs> oh, this is because... <sighs> Damn iterators. Okay. When you iterate over the elements of a vector, then in theory, every element that you yield is independent, right? They are independent uh, in the sense that they point to distinct elements in the vector. And it's okay for you to have a mutable reference to the first element and the second element at the same time, because they're non-overlapping. They're non-aliased. Um, and in theory, this should be fine for iterators too, because the iterator... Uh, should be able to yield, yield elements that are tied to the lifetime of the vector rather than the lifetime of the iterator. But the iterator trait is not was stabilized long before generic associated types, which means that if we now look for uh, for vec, 
slice um, intermute. So intermute has a mutable reference to uh, to the overall slice. And it's going to be interesting, actually. Iterator. No, it should yield elements into the vector. So why is it unhappy about this? Basically, what I'm claiming here, right, is that if I have a let mute v is a vector that has a 0 and a 1. And then I do um, iterator is v dot iter mute. And then I do 0 is it dot next dot unwrap. Uh, 1 is it dot next dot unwrap. Uh, then I should be able to now, you know, do whatever I want here. Like, for example, I should be able to do 0 is 1 and 1 is 0, just to, to use both of them. Yeah, and that's okay. So why is this not okay? I wonder whether this requires that it's static. Mm, that's why. So join set requires that the future you pass in is static and participate uh, takes a mutable reference to the peer, which we get from up here. And the mutable reference to peer uh, is therefore required to be static in order to be passed to spawn for the future that gets passed to spawn to be static, which then requires peers or the borrows from peers to be static which would require Pierce itself to be static, which is not. So that's what it's actually complaining about here. Um, I think we can use a local set instead. So um, in Tokyo, there's a, there's a join set, but there's also a local set. A set of tasks which are executed on the same thread. Uh, yeah, but does it require static though? That's what I want to know. It still requires static. Um, so we either need to move the peer into the future so the participate future would consume the peer and then like return the peer at the end or we would need this to just kind of work um i thought there was a way to have one of these that's not static Because really what we're doing here is just a join. Um, but I can't use the actual join macro because that requires that you enumerate all the branches. I basically want like a dynamic join, right? Which is what I was hoping that join set would give me, but I think join set actually spawns the tasks. Which is the problem because it, the moment you spawn them, then they are, um, then they do need to be static. And I thought local set allowed you to do this, but it, for some reason, it doesn't require send, but it still requires static. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there is a... Um, in futures util, there is... Uh, are you is it under future is it under future join all 
which does not require static. Uh, and we're actually okay with this using futures and ordered instead. It just makes me sad is all. But fine. So this is going to be a futures util stream futures unordered futures unordered new uh, participants participants install push and then participants dot next. Okay, uh, things are happier now, that's good. So submit here.clone, tasks.clone, and finish.clone. That's easy. Uh, this should be done, yes. Uh, sending the blocks, uh, unwrap. Uh, and drop tasks as opposed to all peers already exited, which actually means we could even do this up here. Uh, expect uh, bound is equal bound holds all these items. All right, so we queue all the work. We make all the peers start their, their sort of work stealing collaborative journey. This is basically cooperative multitasking, right? Um, and then we watch for things to finish. If we get a piece, then we're happy. Um, if we've received every piece, then I support, I suppose what we could do here too is um, mute bytes received is zero. And then we could say uh, bytes received plus equals piece.block.len. Um, is if we get here, we should assert equal uh, bytes received with uh, piece size. Um, Uh, and in fact, okay, we're, so we're in actually in a slightly awkward place here. We have to be a little bit careful around cancellation because um, let's say that all the pieces are done here. Now, if all, all the pieces are done, then we're fine. The thing I'm concerned about is that we drop the future of a given participant while it is still active. So for example, let's imagine that I just had a bug here. So I, I broke here the moment we get any piece. What will happen is that means that we're gonna drop participants without letting all of those futures finish. If we drop participants, then that means uh, that we're going to drop this entire async block, right? This, this, this is a future, and we would drop that future mid-execution, which means that we might drop it here, for instance. So we've sent a message, but we haven't received the response. So imagine that we drop the future right here. Um, and then we go through another round and now we download a different piece and we try to use the same peer. Well, it hasn't read this thing out yet. 
So when it starts, it's going to send another message to, to uh, request something. But then when it just goes to read, it's going to read the, the message that it didn't get around to reading last time because it was canceled. Um, so that's the thing we have to be careful about here. So um, uh, really what we want to do is make sure that we always wait for all of the futures of all of the participants. Um, And how do we want to do that? And we have to think about the same safety here around uh, dropping the future that we get back from participants next. But I think that's okay because um, dropping the future from next... Uh, does not drop the participant future. It just drops the future that looks for the next participant that's ready. Uh, like participants itself is not dropped. Uh, because this, this basically holds on to a mutable reference to participants. So that part is fine. So uh, I think what we want to do here is... Um, if not done dot closed, maybe. Oh, uh, where's our canal docs? So if I go here to async receiver, what do I have available to me? Uh, is terminated. Oh, right. This is actually a Tokyo channel. Uh, MPC receiver. Wow. There is no is close. That makes me sad. It's actually okay for us to break here though. We could just repeat this loop underneath. It's just I would rather not do that if I could avoid it. No, there's a close method, but that's not what I want. I want is closed. I want to check whether it's closed. I don't want to actively close it. Um, but I think actually, so if we've received all of the done events, I think that has to mean that all of the participants are either uh, pure. So one of these triggers that, right? And um, if that means that if we get the end of this, either all of the participants are gone Right, so all of the send handles have been dropped, or um, there's still some peers that are active and just waiting for more work, which they'll never get. Um, and if a uh, future is stuck here, then it's totally fine for us to cancel it because the the connection is in a sort of clean state. So I actually think it's okay to break here. Um, this must mean that, uh, all peers have either exited or, uh, or participations have either exited or are waiting for more work. Uh, in either case, um, particip, uh, the... It is okay to drop all to drop all the participant futures. Great. So breaking here is fine, in which case we're gonna drop participants. 
Um, if a peer gave up, then that's fine. We don't actually need to do anything with that. In theory, we could imagine that, okay, this peer is probably slow, so we shouldn't try it again ever again. Um, but the fact that it's like, it is no longer reading from the task queue, so we're kind of fine. Um, the one thing to watch out for here is that we might be in this case. Uh, so this is really like, if bytes received is equal to piece size, then uh, great, we got all the bytes. Uh, else, all the peers quit on us. Uh, so, so we don't actually have to handle this case here because either there are still more peers, in which case they're going to continue to handle the traffic, or um, there are no more peers, in which case we'll still get into this case and we'll just get into the, the else case down here. Um, nothing to do except maybe deprioritize this peer for later. So like a to do. Um, if we learn that there are no participants next, uh, that there are no participants left. Um, this must mean we will, we are about to get uh, none from done dot receive. Uh, so we'll handle it there, right? Because uh, the transmitter for done is finish. Finish is cloned into every participant. Uh, and then we drop our copy here. So when there are no more participants, that means there are no more send handles for finish, uh, which means that done will return none. So there's nothing to do in this clause because it's the same as this clause. Uh, and it's just racy which one we hit first. Um, and I guess this is, we only need to think about this branch if this is... Um, Participants dot is empty. Um, okay, so the last case is this: like the peer failed. Um, it already isn't participating in this block, in this piece anymore. Uh, so this is more of an indicator that we shouldn't try this peer again and should remove it from the global peer list to do. And again, if, if this causes us to have no peers left for this piece, it'll be handled in this case anyway. Uh, so, so these are really more about like peers that we should now think about removing um, rather than we actually need to do something that's different from this branch. Great, so this is the only break case. Um, and so what we'll do here is, if bytes receive this, this, otherwise, uh, we can actually do, um, so there are two things we could do here. We can either, we can do the simple thing for now, which is just, um, if there, if we don't didn't get all the bytes because all the peers disconnected on us, we just give up. We just return an error. Um, the other sort of realistically what we would need to do, right, is, okay, we did connect to all of the peers. Right, even this is arguably uh, a little overzealous. Because this should really be, imagine all of the peers have a, a particular piece. We still don't want to download it from, uh, I guess we're already limiting how many peers we're connected to anyway. So I don't think we need the take here. But, but what that means is if it turns out that none of the peers that we originally connected to um, are accessible to us anymore, none of them are able to give us this piece, then the only thing we can do is connect more peers, which sort of happens outside of this, right? It happens, uh, all the way up here. So we would need to grab more things into this in the first place. Um, and we could do that. I think we might actually need a sort of, 
I think we're going to need a sort of data structure outside of this that lets us continuously populate more, um, more peers. And, and the way we might have to do that is using... Um, maybe we could do this actually with the tower service crate and load balancing. I'll have to think about that one. But but ultimately, like the the recovering from this case is actually kind of complicated. It's like we'll need to connect to more peers and make sure that those uh, that those additional peers also have this piece and then download the pieces we didn't get from them. Which also means we don't want to re-download the parts that we have now successfully downloaded. Because it might be that like before we lost the last peer, we downloaded all but one of the blocks. So we actually want to be a little bit smart about how we do that, um, that recovery. Um, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to think about that. Um, so in this case, I think what we'll do is bail here and say uh, no peers left to get piece, piece I. Um, and the, the nice thing that we can do now, now that we have this loop, uh, I think we can expect here, uh, receiver should not go away, uh, while there are active peers, us, and missing pieces, uh, missing blocks, this one. Um, is that here we can actually correctly deal with choking too. Because down here, I suppose, right? We can we can do um, what, what we kind of want to do is we want to send, I suppose, uh, interested when we're asked to participate. Uh, and this was in previously in main, right? Um, so we're going to send an interested message. And now, uh, the thing that we're, we're going to need to keep track of is whether we're choked. It's going to be a Boolean. Um, and so initially, choked is true. So we can't expect to get one of those. Uh, so initially, we're going to assume that we're choked. And initially, we're not going to say that we're interested in anything. And then when we're asked to participate, we're going to send, okay, we're interested now. Um, and we actually need to be a little smart here, which is something like a uh, loop. This has to become a loop. Uh, we want if uh, self.choked, if we're choked, then we need to wait for an unchoke message. And I guess here we can match on um, unchoke.tag. Then self.choke is false. And then we're allowed to, to keep going on. Uh, 
uh, if it's anything else, then this doesn't really help us. Like, we're, that means we're still choked, so we can't really send any other messages. There are other messages here that you can imagine we have to handle, uh, but, but unchoke is really the thing that we're waiting for. If we get anything else, I think we can just ignore it because we know we're not in a request. Um, and if it, the other side is interested in something, we're not going to send them anything anyway. Um, so I think unchoke is really the only message we can get. We could look at the spec here. Um here uh so we can get uh we could get a choke uh we can get an unchoke but we're in the case where we're already choked so the so we shouldn't be getting another choke message we could get a choke down here um so i guess this here we should really match on piece dot tag uh and if the message tag is choke Uh, then uh, then we should set self.choke is true. Uh, we should do submit dot send the block. right? So we should make someone else take this block instead because we're choked. Um, and then we will uh, continue with this outer loop. Um, if, on the other hand, we get message tag peace, uh, then we can... Uh, then we're fine, we fall through. And if we get anything else... I don't think we should expect anything else. Where's the... Right, so here... Let okay block. Uh, if we get anything else, we're gonna break. So at the beginning of the loop, we're gonna make sure that we're not choked. If we are choked, then we're gonna wait until we are unchoked. Uh, and is there anything else we could get? Interested, we don't care about. Um, not interested, we don't care about. Have, um, so have, uh, have means peer uh, should now be eligible for more pieces. Um, so that's something that we, you know, might want to handle in the future. So this is like a to-do um, update bit field. Uh, and to do um, update a list of peers uh, or uh, add to list of peers for relevant piece. Um, but it still doesn't let us break from this loop because we're still choked. Um, request we're just ignoring, right? Not allowing request for now. Um, piece we shouldn't get because we haven't requested anything. And cancel we also shouldn't get because... Um, because we're not allowing requests. But... Actually, I think we might be able to get piece. I'll show you in a second. Um, so the moment we break out of this loop, it means that we're no longer choked, which means that we can take a task off the queue. Um, if there are no tasks on the queue, then we can break, right? It means there's no more work. Um, and then we do the whole thing to send the request. Um, and then what we're going to do is see what we get next. Uh, like so. If we get a chalk, if we get a choke, uh, then we have to continue this, which is going to be uh, then we're going to continue task. Um, if we get a piece, then we can break because we're happy. 
Um, and I think it's impossible for this to have gone away. We still have a receiver. So it's not possible for this to fail. Um, if we get a piece, then we're good. Um, what else can we get after sending a request? I don't think we can get anything else because we know we're unchoked. I guess we can get the, um, uh, we can still get have. So this is, I guess we can do message tag interested message tag, uh, not interested like these. We just ignore, um, these. What I actually think I want here is something like uh, pub crate fn. Um, well, yeah, I'll leave that for now. Um, so these ones can all happen down here as well. Uh, I guess I might as well do this, right? So. Mission tag unchoke um, should be anyhow bail. Um, peer sent unchoke while unchoked. Shouldn't happen. Uh, and bit field is sort of the same. Like uh, peer sent bit field uh, after handshake has been completed. So these are basically like violations of the state machine, right? From by the peer. Um, and now the interesting part here is, whoa, uh, okay, okay, okay. Peace is, is this possible? So can we get a, while we are choked, can we get a piece? And I assume that can't happen. Pierce sent piece while choked. But what I wonder is, imagine that you are currently, um, you're currently unchoked. Then you send a request and while you're sending the request, the other side unchokes you. And so it receives the request after it's unchoked, but you, uh, sorry, it, it chokes you. So you send the request before you realize you're choked, but the recipient receives the request um, while the choke is still on its way to you. So we then read here out a choke. And so we decide to go back up and wait to be unchoked. But the request we sent was still going to the server. Is the server ever going to respond to that request? Like if it decides to unchoke us, can it now decide to send us that piece anyway? Yeah, there's there's um there's something about the state machine that I don't quite like. Like I think it might need to be more not one at a time than it currently is. Like, I think this actually needs to be like, like more truly a state machine. Um, Cause like, it's a little weird, right? Imagine we get a piece that we asked for ages ago um, and we thought we were choked. So we thought it wasn't coming then if that request, if that piece now comes, um, I guess we could send it on the finish channel, but it, but we already yielded that block for someone else to be responsible for. So we, we no longer really own sending that on finish. Um, yeah, something's not quite right here. Like we can, we can make it work, right? So we can say, um, we can just ignore this piece. 
a piece that we no longer need slash are responsible for. Um, and we can do the same down here. Um, wait, no, not download. I don't think we're going to need the download function anymore. Uh, we want participate. So down here, uh, if we get a piece, uh, ba -ba -ba. here, so if, um, piece dot index not equal to piece I or Um, piece begin is not equal to the piece we're waiting for, or those are actually the only two things that really matter. Um, this can actually be an assert. So if either of those are true, then it's not the piece we were looking for. Otherwise, it is the piece we're looking for and we can break. Right, so uh, if we happen to be getting some piece that we asked for in the past, we're just going to ignore it because it's not the one we needed. Um, the reason I say it feels a little weird is because having this twice, for example, reads a little odd. And you could also imagine that you want to support requesting multiple blocks simultaneously, maybe. But maybe that's also an optimization we don't care about. The fact that we have to duplicate have is a little weird. Um, but, but maybe this is okay. We'll see how it plays out. Um, so if we now go back to download, um, actually we don't need to, I think we did that. So this now handles choking and unchoking, uh, get, gets the block, sends the, I guess piece here is really arguably misnamed. This should be message. And it's a little misleading for the message tag here to be piece because it isn't a piece, it's a block. It's a piece of a piece. Um, but fine. Okay. So now that we have this, um, and we're ignoring those and that's fine. It shouldn't be a problem in this instance. And then we get all of this back. So we now have all the bytes. Uh, so bytes here is now going to be all blocks. And files is just going to be um, Oh wait, no, that's not right. So the the all blocks here is all the blocks for this piece. Um, and so and this is where we're going to stick it all in memory for now, but obviously that's not actually what you will want to do, uh, is we'll do, where's the place where we compute the length here? Um, I thought we added that to, to the tracker, did we not? I guess we didn't. Uh, sorry, I mean to torrent. No, we did. Okay, yeah, so t.length. So we just create a giant thing of that holds all the bytes of all the pieces. So clearly you would not actually do this, right? Like to do this is dumb. Um, but what we can now do is when we get back uh, whatever this piece is, 
we should be able to do all pieces, uh, index it by, um, index it by, where do we have the piece I, right? So this is gonna be um, piece.index multiply by the T dot info dot P length um, there and further, yeah, and then we just copy from slice uh, all blocks. And in fact, maybe the error case we do here is we do something like um, stick this uh, piece back onto the need pieces heap, right? Uh, so probably also stick this back onto the pieces heap. But after we've done all this, and after there, there's nothing left in need pieces, then now bytes should be uh, all pieces, and files should be t.info what do we say this should be? Vec of file. Um, which is going to be a match on t.info.keys. Right, where... single file, then this is going to be a vec of file. Otherwise, it's just going to map to files. Length and the path is just going to be t.info.name. Great. And why can't I move out of this? I can't move out of this because let me move it. As inavariant multifile, which is behind a shared reference. Oh, it's because uh, they're fine. It's because we're we're taking in a reference to the torrent is why. So this is gonna have to be clone, and this is files dot clone. Great, and this is uh, length. Yeah, fine. This is length. And now we don't need download piece. We don't really need this bit uh, in peer. Uh, we don't need any of the the download method we wrote that can go away because the participate takes care of it. Now what do we get? Right, so now I think all the errors are in main. Um, so if we get rid of these unused things, just tidy up a little bit. Uh, adder is never used, pieces is never used, that's fine. If we now go to main, um, what I want to do for download, oh, right, source lib, that's fine. Just so that the old code keeps working. Nice. Okay, so this now builds. 
with the code the way that we had it. And I wonder... I wonder if this will just sort of work. I mean, I realize this is... We wrote a bunch of code um, that we haven't really tested. But at the same time, most of it is very similar to the... Um, to the... Uh, like it's sort of copy pasted from what we had before. So the main question is whether this, this scheduling logic actually uh, does the right thing. So let's do git add dot hit commit. Um, first attempt at uh, multi peer file download. And I just want to see, like, if we push it up and run the test suite, like, does it just do the right thing? There's almost certainly a bug somewhere. Yeah, so someone in chat is, is pointing out that the, there's a there's a different design here that is much more centralized, right? So you have a... Uh, that has a sort of central location that knows about the state of every peer, the state of every piece. Um, and then you have a sort of, uh, like you have a, a thing that's responsible for the connection to every peer. And, and rather than having each peer decide what it does, you just have the central thing say, you download this thing, you download this thing and sort of drive the whole thing. And then the, the peers just blindly do what they're supposed to do or what they're told to do rather. Um, that's fine too. I uh, I actually don't think it would be that much nicer. But it could also be because I haven't built it that way, so it's hard to say. Let's see what it says for this last step. I'm curious. Build, 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 build. Thank you. Step 18. How many steps are there? I don't remember how many steps there were. What are we here? Step, I don't know what step this is. <laughs> step 24, somehow. How many steps are there? Uh, what is code crafters? Oh, it's this. So this is the, from the previous video, this is the, the site that has like, um, build your own X style challenges. And so I was doing their, uh, build your own BitTorrent challenge. Um, and it basically guides you through, like, if you were to build your own BitTorrent here, are the, the sort of, uh, a set of problems you would need to solve. The, the goal isn't so much to build something that's like a production ready version of X, right? Like as you see from here, this is clearly not a production ready version of a BitTorrent client, but it does force you to think about some like relatively real problems, go read the spec, implement some like actual real code. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think this is a good way to learn in general. Um, if you wanna try it out, then there's a here. You could do it through this thing. Um, all right. Something failed. What failed? Source slice length does not match destination slice length. At download line 223. No, 123. Okay, so we do actually need here to say that this is until uh, piece.block.len, which I guess is really uh, piece size. Wait, no, no, block size. Uh, And block size here is p.block.len. And then down here, we're probably gonna have to do the same thing. So this is basically copy from si slice asserts that the slice you're copying from is the same length as the slice you're copying into. Uh, so here, this would be piece size. Mm. Yeah. Uh, 
copy from slice is strict. I guess peer doesn't really need to hold its adder. The, the real reason I did that was so that um, a peer could uh, reconnect if they lost their connection. Stage 11. I think it's stage 12 is the last one. Oh, no, it is stage 11. Yeah, this feels an awful lot like it's just hanging. So the question is where it's hanging. Um, I forget whether I... Can I like get one of the torrents? Yeah, there's like a, this thing. Download. Let's see. Well, something's doing something. Nice, okay. We get no output, great. Um, so let's here, let's do a little bit of debugging for our own sake. Uh, start receive loop. See if it just, see if it gets there. It does, okay. Um, so this is participant finished. And this is, um, got piece. This is got pieces end. Now, if I remember correctly, there are only two pieces. So, Oh, I know what's going on. This, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so this is actually um, if yeah, 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 if bytes received is piece size, then we're done here. Um, have received every piece. This must mean that. Uh, exited or waited for more work. In either case. Great, and then because um, because every one of the participants is not keeping track of how much work there is. The, the the what we actually run into is every participant holds a submit handle to re to t put tasks back in, which means that the looking for a new task will never finish. Um, like you, they'll never get none from the new task queue. Um, so therefore they'll always be stuck there and every thread holds on to finish, which is the thing that lets you send blocks you finished downloading, which means that the, we'll never get the none signal here from done unless all of the peers have failed. So this is, uh, there are no peers left. Um, so we can't progress. Uh, and in the else case here, this just means that there are more blocks left. So, so here. Oh. Less foo. That looks pretty promising. Right? Actually exit when done. Now, this is arguably a, uh, or not just arguably, this is a simplified version, right? Because in the Code Crafters one, I think they assume that every peer has every uh, piece. Um, and so our logic, and, and no peers ever fail. Um, and that obviously makes it so that it's a lot easier to get things wrong in the error cases 
or the not everyone has everything cases um, and still pass the thing, right? All the tests ran successfully. Okay, this is pretty amazing actually, because again, remember we wrote all of the code here and didn't test any of it until the end. And what we had, we had one bug, right? Which is this one. I, I'm not gonna count this one because this is just copy from size doing sanity checking. It was still correct, but we had one bug. Nice. That's really cool. Now, now there, there are obviously um, things missing here, right? So for example, in the peer connection case, um, over in this world, uh, we're gonna want to deal with things like timeouts, right? So uh, if the stream on the other end ends up taking a really long time, we actually wanna terminate that peer. Um, and that's not something we currently have um, any handling for. So we'll add that here. Um, if dot next timeout error and return block to submit if next timed out. So there, there is more work for us to do here. Um, but I think this is most of the restructuring that I wanted to show, right? Like th there's obviously more stuff to get this to production readiness, but hopefully you can see now just how different this structure is from how we started in, uh, in if you look at download piece, right? Which we wrote last time, which is a very just imperative linear top to bottom, do these steps in this order which worked fine for doing the challenge. But once you start like thinking about how you actually want the system to operate, uh, first of all, you change the interface, but also um, you, you start changing it so that you can have this concurrency, you keep track of multiple pieces of state at the same time. Um, and that just makes it better to work with. Um, oh, right. And then um, obviously another, uh, another improvement we would want to make here is you know, this is dumb. Like you wouldn't keep all of the pieces here uh, in memory in a linear sequence. Um, so uh, at the very least use uh, bytes bytes uh, to avoid the single large um, allocation and having to mem copy um, into it. R really like bytes doesn't really even help you here, but bytes is actually probably what I would use down here. Um, uh, because what bytes lets you do is it lets you have multiple vex or multiple uh, sequences of bytes that are gathered separately. And then it lets you just sort of stick them together. Um, and then you have one thing that references the other ones uh, rather than having to copy them back and forth. In practice, I don't know that it matters within a piece. Um, so I'm kind of tempted to just leave that one. It's not, it's not actually that dumb. Um, but for this, this is dumb uh, because uh, all the pieces for a given torrent may not fit in memory. Uh, should probably write every piece to disk uh, so that we can also seed, also resume uh, downloads and seed later on. Um, and obviously this like, if there are no peers that have the piece is all, obviously also a big to do. Um, there's more work we can do here on the, uh, the seeding side. So if we look at peer, right, ideally, um, so up here, ideally peers should keep track of what uh, pieces we have downloaded uh, and references to them um, so that we can uh, respond to um, requests from the other side, also choking the others, uh, choking and unchoking the other side. Um, 
So th there's obviously a bunch more stuff to do here, and I'm not going to claim that this is now a production-ready BitTorrent client, but hopefully, and the same thing with ha handling the halves here, um, there's like more dynamism that can be added, but but hopefully this is still a useful insight into how you would restructure this code. And, and as was pointed out in chat, like there are other ways to restructure this code. This is not the only way to do it. Um, rather than having each peer, for example, be somewhat smart about how to manage its... Um, its connection, you can instead just have a central entity uh, and then just do like IO parallelism. Like it just says, it like all of the messages that come from any peer just go to a central point. That central point says, this channel send this message, this channel send this message. So you keep track of the entire state machine in one thing. Um, and then it just uses the channels as sort of dumb IO channels. That's also a totally legitimate uh, restructuring of this. Which one is better is is hard for me to say because I think you learn which one is better from building with one of them and finding that it doesn't really work well or that the code ends up really messy with lots of interdependencies. We're already seeing a little bit of that here, right? Like, for example, I think if you tried to fill out the code for have here, it'd actually be pretty annoying. Um, and it might have to tie into the code that's in the download loop. Uh, and so that that's not going to be nice. Uh, and that's an indication that maybe you do actually want the entire state machine to be encoded in one place. Um, now, that place is arguably download here, right? Um, but... Uh, yeah, so, so you, you could say the download should be that one entity and to make the peers here dumber rather than use a participate, also totally valid. And and, and, and frankly, could be better. Um, I don't know, I haven't gone down that, that path. Um, but at least we've gone over a lot of async tricks, a lot of channel stuff, um, a lot of hopefully more understanding of like the, the kind of state you need to keep track of and how to think of the state machine. Uh, I hope that was useful. I think that's where we're going to end it for today. Oh, you're reserving the disk space up front, of course. Yeah, there's clearly a bunch more work that can happen here. Um, not, not at all claiming this is done. Uh, hopefully that was useful and uh, have a great rest of your Friday or Saturday if you're elsewhere. Uh, or I guess... Or Thursday if for some of you. Um, but I will see you all later and have a good weekend. See you, folks.